want to get into the meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm ready. Um, one, before we get started, I can't see the timer. Let me, who is timer? Is it Noah? Okay. Great. So I can see everybody. Do you know your communication style? I thought I knew mine. When I think of myself as being a communicator, I tend to get impatient with people that I know really well when they're telling me things. I want them to get right to the point without providing a lot of background and details. However, if I know people a little less, I will give them a little bit more leeway and I'm a little bit more patient. Although inside I'm still thinking, I wish they would hurry up and get to the point. <laughs> Another thing about myself is I'm uncomfortable with small talk. When I meet with people, I just want to get down to business. I, the small talk makes me uncomfortable. However, I know not having small talk makes other people uncomfortable. Based on my personal assessment, I thought I knew my communication style. However, I was a little surprised by the pathways, pathways assessment. We're going to consider communication styles today. I can't get my mouse to work. There we go. These are the four communication styles, analytical, direct, initiating, and supporting. As I mentioned, these are the styles that is, are outlined with pathways. And I think it's important to call this out because when I looked up communication styles, I found most sources had four different communication styles. However, the terminology was a little different. If you're familiar with any of those sources, hopefully you'll be able to cor correlate them with what you already know. Some people will readily identify with one. However, I think many of us will have many different facets from each of the four styles. We're gonna start off with the analytical style, cautious, precise, disciplined. These are words that would describe someone that has an analytical communication style. Because of their cautiousness though, they may be perceived as being a perfectionist. They're usually private with their personal information and they don't express their emotions very easily. However, when they're in a setting, a social setting or group setting, they may appear to be more diplomatic, meaning they often are more open-minded and they're sensitive to others. Being an effective communicator is a two-way street. Understanding the styles of others also helps us deal with them. So when we deal with a person with an analytical style, we're going to want to exhibit patience and allow them to think through the process. The second style is direct. Persons with a direct style often are more results oriented, they're focused, they're competitive. Their motivation is to get things done. They're quick and decisive. They can also be perceived as being impatient or demanding. In a work environment, they display more concern for the results of a relationship, excuse me, the results of getting things done rather than on relationships. And they also don't share their feelings very easily. I'm gonna let Sharon in, excuse me, unless, unless someone else can see that and do it. Got it, okay. When dealing with a person with a direct communication style, you should focus on the solutions and only provide details when asked for them. Initiating style. This is the social butterfly. They communicate easily and fluently with others and they have a fun loving nature. Relationships are important to these communicators. Others may think, however, that they talk too much and listen too little. When we deal with a person with an initiating style, we want to give them time to express themselves and express their feelings and opinions. The supportive style. This communicator is steady, calm, and perceived as being a good listener. They may at times 
appear to be indecisive, however, yet because of their listening skills, others see them as cooperative and dependable. And when we deal with someone with this communication style, we want to be calm, steady, and allow them to make decisions. We discussed the four different styles. Now, I want you to guess, what do you think my style is? I didn't tell you up front because I wanted you to guess what you think my style is. And you can unmute yourself and just tell me. And it's a combination of supportive and analytical. Good. Any <laughs> others? Okay. I'm gonna to go to the next slide, which is gonna show you my style and how I scored. So as Steve was right, I, I'm a combination of supportive, analytical, but also direct. And I wasn't surprised by the combination. I was surprised, however, that supportive was the dominant style. And again, I wasn't surprised the fact that I scored zero in initiating because I'm definitely not a social butterfly. <laughs> However, when I thought about my style and how I am, I'm generally calm, steady, and I can be indecisive. <laughs> so that style actually fit me. And apparently I'm more patient than I thought it was in the beginning. As we reflect on these four styles, I believe it's important to remember that no one style is better than the other. And understanding our dominant style is gonna help us be a better communicator because we're gonna be able to take the pros of that style and use them to our advantage. We also know the negative perceptions so we can take steps to mitigate those. And conversely, understanding other people's styles is gonna help us when we interact with them. We're gonna be less defensive, more patient and accommodating, creating a better experience and we ourselves become better communicators. So I'm gonna ask you the question I asked at the start, do you know your communication style? Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Glennis. That was an excellent, informative speech. Now, uh, Noor, could you uh, tell me